Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're going to be looking at um, Craig Blomberg and historical Jesus studies. And uh, we've just seen Blomberg quote uh, Irenaeus and tell us about textual criticism. And now he writes, There were still some troubling aspects of the Gospels that I needed to clarify. This is a journalist interviewing Blomberg. Blomberg says, uh, the journalist says, in particular, I wanted to better understand the kind of literature genre they represented. That's the Gospels. Blomberg says, when I go to the bookstore and look in the biography section, I don't see the kind of writing that I see in the Gospels, I said. When something writes a biography these days, they... Oh, this is the, um, the uh, interviewer. I said, when somebody writes a biography these days, they thoroughly delve into the person's life. But look at Mark, he doesn't talk about the birth of Jesus or really anything Jesus or Jesus' early adult years. Instead he focuses on three year period and spends half his gospel on the events leading up to the culminating in Jesus last week. How do you explain that? Blongbird held up a couple of fingers. There are two reasons, he, he replied. One is literary, the other is theological. The literary reason is that basically this is how people wrote biographies in the ancient world. They did not have the sense as we do today that it was important to give equal proportion to all periods of an individual's life or that it was necessary to tell the story in strictly chronological order or even to quote people's verbatim as long as the essence of what they said was preserved ancient Greek and Hebrew didn't even have a symbol for quotation marks the only purpose for which they thought history was worth recording was because there were some lessons to be learned from the characters described therefore the biography wanted to dwell at length on those portions of the person's life that was exemplary exemplary and that were illustrative that would help other people that gave meaning to the period of history and we'll listen to blonde particular in better textual shape than any document from antiquity on any topic whatsoever specifically because it was so crucial to such a large group of people that care was taken that it would be very carefully preserved that fact is very important in conversations with friends of ours who may represent either the Muslim religion or closer to historic Christianity, the Mormon faith, because in their writings, in the Quran and the Book of Mormon and other writings of Joseph Smith, more particularly, there are claims that the New Testament was not well preserved either that certain portions had gotten distorted and we don't have the, the stories accurately of, of what the people wanted to tell us, or that entire missing books uh, have been left out. At some point, we probably need to study a little bit about that so that we can get the facts straight. But now I want to come to what I want to spend most of our time together tonight on, and that's what I've called the scholarly spectrum. If scholars are agreed that works in these first three categories do not represent uh, the truth or anything close to it, uh, there is still a huge spectrum within bona fide scholarship with what has been called the quest for the historical Jesus, a quest that really encompasses largely the last 200 years of the 2000 that Christianity has existed. In the 19th century, more or less the first hundred years, with a little bit beginning already uh, just before the 19th century, there were many different philosophical schools that all spawned books about the life of Jesus. In an age when science was increasingly coming to doubt the miraculous, there was a rationalist school of philosophy that tried to preserve elements of New Testament faith and the God. Um, so let's just talk about that. Um, basically, uh, people in the general public think that we live in a scientific age and everybody's objective. But actually, when you look at the historical studies of Jesus, um, philosophy had a major role in the play of the scholars. So, for example, in the 19th century, some scholars were influenced by Hegelian philosophy. This filtered through into historical Jesus studies. Uh, some some scholars were into, interest, uh, influenced by the Romantic movement, 
uh, of the mid 19th century and that filtered into their understanding of the historical Jesus studies so basically be be very aware that every historian every thinker that you will read on Jesus will be biased in some way and you need to process that bias you need to see that bias and 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 try to extrapolate that bias and so you can get to some objective information about Jesus that goes for conservative scholars um, liberal scholars postmodern modernist scholars feminist scholars whatever scholar they are whatever school they all have a particular bias that doesn't mean to say we can't know historical facts it means that we've got to work harder in making sure that we don't come to the table with bias in the study of Jesus